All right, guys, uh, welcome to part two. And in this part, I'm going to be showing you how to configure this launch command. Uh, there's quite a bit of work that we need to do to uh, correct some of the configurations in our server, uh, you know, to, to make it work right. Um, you know, we need to be able to restart and start our application without sudo privileges. So, you know, this is going to be one of those videos that's going to correct a lot of the mistakes that we made as well in our server configuration. Uh, okay, let's start. Um, one of the things that we need to do is we need to enable what we call user jobs in our, uh, you know, in, in, in Upstart. Uh, by default, some Upstart has this enabled already. If, it, if it's not, then uh, basically what you need to do is you need to follow this gist over here, uh, Upstart. So I forked this uh, this gist that will help you configure upstart. Uh, so basically your upstart conf, uh, you know, the, the file uh, needs to look like this. And you can go and check in this directory here. So this is the guy who, you know, he gave, who gave out the script. So, you know, props to him. Uh, but yeah, you need to go into etcdbus system.d upstart.conf. And basically this block here is what you need to use uh, this policy block for the default user. So just make sure that yours looks something like this. That will basically enable user jobs. Uh, so once you've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to our terminal and, uh, you know, we can basically, you know, start our, our, our user job setup. So one of the things we need to do is we need to make a directory. So MK dir uh, dot in it in our home folder. So this is basically where we're going to, we're going to put our, I've already created the folder. So that's why it's saying that, but if you haven't, then, you know, go ahead and do that. This is the folder where we're going to actually be storing all our jobs. So uh, if you remember correctly, we kind of uh, wrote this script already in our Etsy uh, init folder. So if I CD into our Etsy init and our shopper.conf right here is, uh, you know, the the, copper, the the one that we're going to need to copy out. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly do a CP Etsy init shopper.conf. Uh, and then we're going to do a dot in it. So basically I'm just going to copy this file over into the, you know, the, into our newly created in it folder in a home folder. Um, so I'm going to CD out and LS and we can now edit this file. So I'm just going to do a VI dot in it slash shopper dot conf. So basically this is the actual file that we're going to use. Uh, for our uh, application, uh, you know, using Upstart, launching and you know, stopping our application using Upstart. Um, so a few things in here need to actually change. Uh, so with Mina, what happens is when it installs the, so when it installs our, our gems using that bundle command, um, you know, it installs it in, in a different way than we configured before. Basically, if we go into our uh, OPT, www, Checkin.me, and in the current folder, what, what's gonna what you're gonna see is um, basically Mina now installs all the gems in this CD vendor and bundle directory. So and it so it changes the way the gems work. You know we can't just use the like a global gem now. It's it's all application specific. So we need to configure our upstart script to look at the right gems and look at the right binaries. Another thing that has changed is basically all the gems get installed in this bin directory, all the binaries, sorry. Uh, so CD bin. So basically all the bins for our gems are now in this bin directory, which is in our current folder. So we need to have rails reference this binary folder for all the gems. So we do that in our upstart script. So I'm just going to CD out and then I'm just going to do a vi.init slash uh, shopper.conf. All right. Okay. So now we need to add that path, that binary path to our, you know, to our path. Uh, so let's start by doing that. Uh, OPT, www, uh, checkin.me, current, and bin. That's it. So here now we need to use the applications unicorn and not the system unicorn. So, you know, we're not going to use the RBNV shims anymore. It's going to be this binary here. So OPT www slash checkin.me slash current. And uh, bin slash unicorn. 
Yeah, so that's basically, you know, we're now going to use a system unicorn. Uh, another thing is basically you probably have noticed already where our application is now in the current folder of the checkin.me. So we need to do that uh, current. Yeah. All right. So that looks pretty good. I think this should work. Um, so that should be it. So I'm going to save that and quit. And what I'm going to do now is just to avoid any conflicts, I'm going to remove that, um, you know, Etsy in it shopper dot slash since we don't need it anymore. Okay, it says okay, fine, we'll do sudo rm uh, etc in it shopper dot conf gone. Okay, so now we have just that one shopper file in our home directory, and that's what we're gonna use to launch our application. So okay, so once we've done all that. Um, you know, let's go ahead and uh, configure Unicorn since our, our path has now changed. We need to reconfigure the Unicorn in our application. So I'm going to open up Sublime Text right here. I have it open, Unicorn. Um, over here, our working directory needs to change. So it needs to have current. Yeah. And checking on me. Okay, so this now has to have current in front of it. Current. Yep. All right, so that's it. Um, that should work. Uh, so that you know should correct everything that we need to correct. So git status. So okay, I'm just gonna commit our deploy. Uh, so I'm gonna git add the deploy file. Git status. Git commit. Uh, added deploy. Armina. Git push origin develops. So we're just getting ready. You know, putting up all the files, putting it into GitHub. And getting it ready for our deployment. So once we've done all that, uh, you know, one last thing is our unicorn configuration needs to change. So I'm going to go into the uh, our Etsy nginx. And I'm going to go to sites available. And I'm going to configure my checkin.me. So uh, okay, so this is read only. So for this one, we're going to need pseudo privileges. Whoops. Okay. Um, so over here, we're going to need to make sure that our root folder is pointing to the right place. Uh, I've already done it here. Um, you know, if you if you haven't done it, basically yours is gonna show something like, you know, check in.me and then public right away. So just go ahead and add the current uh, like we did. So yours might show like this. And so, you know, all you need to do is just add a current over there. And that's it. Um, that's all you need to do in terms of the unicorn configuration. Okay, so I lied to you guys. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do for our shopper.com. So I'm just going to do vi.init slash shopper.com. So what we need to do is basically we need to configure this file to log, uh, you know, any errors. Uh, so as we run this command, you know, the start uh, shopper, we might run into errors because, you know, for whatever reason, unicorn can't start or whatever. So by default, when we had this as a system level job, it would output it to var logs, but it's not going to do that anymore. So what we need to do is we need to allow, um, you know, this file to output the logs for us uh, in the right place. So basically, we're going to put it in our home folder and the line to do that is something like this. Um, you know, sorry about copying and pasting, but it's a pretty simple line. You just do the execute and then there's this, you know, arrow and then with the home directory basically the path where you want the log to go to and then uh you know and one so this basically just sets the std out to you know where where our our you know wherever we want it to be um so any if we try to start this script and it fails we're going to get an output so we can know you know okay we can look at this log and we can figure out what's wrong and uh, you know fix it so with that i think that's pretty much it for this uh for this script so let's go ahead and start our uh you know our upstart so start shopper okay shopper is already running so stop shopper
Okay. Um, so that's basically it's it stopped our job. You know, uh, there there's no job called shopper anymore. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly go and start our shopper up again, just like that. Okay. Uh, what's probably happened is, uh, you know, because we moved those files around, um, I think that we need to restart our dbus. So I'm just going to do a sudo service dbus restart. All right, so that should should do it. Uh, if it's not, then, you know, we might need to restart our VM. Uh, so I'm going to start shopper. Unknown job shopper. So I'm just going to do a sudo reboot. Hopefully it'll work. All right. I've restarted my VM um, because, you know, it wasn't working with the new configuration that we set up. So what I'm going to do is just going to do a start shopper. And let's see if that was going to work. It looks like it's working. Okay, job failed to start. So it's found the job that the whole the user job that we set up and, you know, it's failed to start. So let's check out why. So if you do an LS, we have a shopper log right there. So let's cat out that shopper the log and see what happens. Okay, uh, it says that, you know, there's this configurator, uh, unicorn, you know, config.ru, not readable. Um, so it's probably some path somewhere that we're not setting up right. Master fail to start, check std error.log for detail. Okay, well, let's check that. Let's go to the cd opd www flat -in .me, um and current and i'm going to go to log and it's not here hmm okay i think what's happening is because we did not um deploy we pushed the new configuration for unicorn um, but we did not deploy it to the server yet. So yeah, that's probably it. So let me just do a quick Mina deploy to make sure it has the freshest copy that, you know, for this unicorn that we modified, um, you know, to make sure all the paths are correct. All right, so now it's deploying the new version. As you can see, it's much quicker than the first time we did it because it had to install all the gems. And it took just 15 seconds. And this is what I'm talking about, you know, about the whole speed. Like it skipped the assets pre-compilation because I already done that in the previous deploy. It didn't detect any change. So it didn't run it. Nice, right? Okay, so now, um, you know, we should have the latest version up in our server. So what we're going to do is uh, let's try and start the shopper once again. Looks like it's doing something. And there we go. Look at that. So we've started Chopper. It's now running on our server. Looks pretty good. So, you know, um, everything seems to be working just right. Uh, you know, I think that this is basically now working. So the next thing we need to do is we need to enable that. Um, you know, if you do restart Chopper, this will now work as well. Uh, so it's really nice and we don't even need pseudo privileges. So what we need to do is in our deploy script, um, so I'm going to go back to here, deploy, and I'm going to configure this launch command. Uh, I'm going to do restart shopper. So basically what's going to happen is uh, the, the deploy is going to run and it's going to hit this launch part. So once it's done all the assets, the D, you know bundle install, the DB migrate or whatever, it's going to run this restart shopper. So everything is pretty much automated, right? So I'm just going to then uh, now go into git status, git commit. Launch, yeah, git push origin develop. All right, so I'm just gonna now do another Mina deploy, um, you know, and you know, now it's gonna basically restart the application for us as well. So just to test that out, so that looks good. Mina deploy, there we go. So it's gonna check for the migration, gonna skip it, and then check this out. It's now trying to relaunch our application. It's deployed the new version. It's now launching our application. So that's pretty cool. 
So now let's go to the browser and check if it worked. Check in not me and bam, it worked. So there we go. This is our application. It's pre-deployed. You saw me delete the entire folder. So the fact that it's working now means our Mina deployment is now working. Um, and that basically concludes our episode. And what I want to show you guys now is basically I have set up a, 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 get a repository here where you know you can go and review. So I've set it up in this structure. So we have a series and then we're going to have episodes, as I mentioned before, in our uh, 2014 video and you know demos for developers, episodes, so media for deployment. So all the notes that I talked about, all the files that I configured is all here. Uh, so you can come in here. There's a nice table of content you can click on. And, uh, you know, you can review all this content, copy, paste, whatever, you know, just use it. And, uh, you know, if there's any issue, if I made any mistakes in here, drop me an issue and I'll fix it. Um, so, yeah, enjoy. You know, uh, this, you know, should now get you guys up and running with Mina.